this is definitely something you do only at the right time and at the right place, okay? It's a beautiful vanish, very old idea. Uh, you can do it with a ring, you can do it with a coin, you can do it with a garbage can lid, uh, anything uh, with a rounded edge on it, okay? And this sort of gives away the secret method here. It's a funny one. This is the kind of thing you really need to practice uh, before you're going to have the confidence to really, I mean, you need to kind of almost work on it before going out the door that day if you're going to share it or make some friends at the school calf or the work lunchroom, whatever. Um, so it's a right time and right place thing. It's a little angly. It looks beautiful, but I'll tell you right now, one of the biggest challenges is when you make something just vanish into thin air, you're basically asking people to release the hounds. Release the hounds and to go looking for the item. I mean, because it didn't just vanish into thin air. It's got to be somewhere is what people are thinking. So. Uh, my advice to you is to take this beautiful vanish and vanish the ring or the coin or whatever uh, and then have it reappear somewhere. The uh, most direct and flexible version of this would be to borrow a, a bill from somebody or a paper napkin, pick it up, say we'll try something and just ball it up and put it right on the table. Okay? But what you've done is you've loaded in a duplicate of the ring. Okay, let's say you're going to use your ring, load in a duplicate of the ring into the paper napkin or the dollar bill, ball it up, put it on the table. People think you've done nothing. I guess he's about to do a trick. Then take your ring off, okay? And then make it vanish under this ridiculous magical vanish. That'll take all the heat off. At that point, even if people think there might maybe two rings involved, it takes all the heat off the search for the, uh, the, the object that vanished into thin air, okay? In general, I mean, I think vanishes, uh, there used to be an old, um, very old uh, vaudeville show, magician. And he'd end his show by simply saying, let me give you one last question. Where do the ducks go? And he'd have this cage with these ducks in it. And he'd cover it with a foulard, a big, basically a blanket that uh, a, uh, I guess, uh, a Boy Scout isn't using at that time. A Boy Scout or a priest isn't using the blanket at that time. Uh, and covered and then the, the cage would vanish and the duck would vanish. And he'd end his show basically with this question mark, where do the ducks go? I think great theater. I think a really cool idea. In a close-up setting though, Straight up vanishes unless there's a reappearance or a transformation can be, uh, I think, theatrically weak, psychologically get people sort of all over you. Having said all that, let's look at the vanish. So, boy, I mean, it had nothing to do with the watch. I know some of you guys might be thinking the watch. You're going to want to be seated because you end up lapping the ring. But what makes this look so magical is that, I mean, even notice that this is traditional lapping, right? The object is here and I'm going to take it. I'm going to pick it up, squeeze it, make it vanish. That's what I'm going to do. Okay? But when I do it and I pick it up and I squeeze it and it's gone, it's about a time delay. If I, because all I did is I came over, pretended to pick it up and dropped it in my lap, right? As I slid it to the edge, okay? And this is the kind of thing that if you look and you study it, then people are going to be very suspicious. But if it's here and you establish you're about to go pick it up and then your eyes come up and you go, actually, the thing about a ring like this, there's the misdirection is perfect because they come up when you come up and the larger action your meta action, your larger action communicates it. Rather than getting up, a t uh, focused on a tiny, tiny, um, sort of the micro level at the wrong time when you're dropping, okay? So traditional, traditionally though, the item is brought to the edge and put in the hand or something like that. What's so beautiful about this Spanish is the hands never get to go to the edge of the table. Now, the reason they don't get there is because I focus on this and I'm making a cup. Now the cup I'm making with my hand is a very loose cup and I've I tilt my fingers a little bit so that they kind of perform. They're a little bit of a ramp. And this item, when I take it and apparently put it in the fist, I let it fall and the length of the arm covers the journey of the ring uh, rolling uh, from the closed fist into my lap. The worst thing to do then though is uh, after it's in your lap, the worst thing to do then is to then come up and quickly show it's gone. Now is exactly when you want to slowly bring it off the table slowly bring it forward, maybe even suggest that people should lean in, okay? And then rubbing, rubbing and making it vanish. Obviously, it's also great for through the table, for if you're gonna do the ring through the table, because in this situation, I could pretend to put it in, use the vanish, get it down on my lap, come up here, okay? Then show your right hand absolutely empty. Make sure they get that. Then go under the table, pick up the ring, and now you can tap, show it's gone, and come up and show the ring. Not too long ago, I uh, posed a question here on the channel. Do you prefer sitting down or standing up when doing magic? And of course, so many of you said they prefer standing up, and I do too, because you know, if I sit down, I basically vanish, there's that. Uh, but also standing up, there's this sense of control and flexibility, and you can adapt and respond, it seems. Um, and I think there's a lot to be said for that. However, there are a lot of situations where sitting down, where sort of suddenly stand up sounds weird. 
what you really want to be doing is sitting down. Uh, and so I think that's one of the things that works well with this. I personally have like probably 10 or 15 tricks that I only do sitting down. They rely on some lapping and this and that. And that's the nice thing about uh, well, subscribing to a channel like this, hopefully, is that you start to learn the variety of stuff depending on the situation. You know, it's cool to be able to walk into a space. I feel so lucky and also so powerful to be able to walk into a space and know dollar bill, paper napkin, sitting, standing, the mentalism, uh, some flourishy stuff, all that I, I have all these skills at my disposal. And with the uh, knowledge of that comes confidence. And with the confidence is exactly when I think you really start um, exploring yourself as a performer after you've got the slides, after you've got the tricks, after you've got the scripts. At that point, really the journey of you of really exploring your performance uh, really begins only then. Okay, so keep that in mind. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you haven't subscribed, come on, subscribe. Some crazy stuff's coming up. As always, in fact, I've got a whole bunch of what I've been blowing off the dust off some stuff I haven't really performed or shared for years now because uh, I got a bunch of new uh, sort of uh, busy gig schedule coming up, but I thought I'd blow off the dust. Um, so at the same time, I'm going to be teaching some stuff here on the channel that I haven't performed in many years. I'm really looking forward to doing that. So hit the like button, subscribe, and as always, thank you so much for hanging out with me. And together we share our passion for deception. And you know what's really cool too? And again, if you're if you've got the um, that's okay. It's just a large battery fell out of uh, Chris Mayhew's butt.